Well, welcome again to Camp Hope AME Church located at 114 Camp Hope Church Road, Macon, Georgia 31211. We'd like to welcome those that are already out there on the phone line. Amen. We're just glad, Sister Betty Strickland, that you're out there. Amen. We pray you have your Bibles open. Amen. To do what it is that we need to do. Also, those that are out there in the virtual world, we'd like to welcome you. Amen. But before we get to started in our Bible study, we want to emphasize that we need to make sure that we go out and vote. I see Reverend Sapp, good to see you this evening. Amen. Pray that God is blessing you and giving you joy no matter what your situation and circumstances is. So let us join in and let us talk a little bit about voting. Let us watch this video. Hello, I'm Sherilyn Eiffel, President and Director Counsel of the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. Many of you know that a priority of the Legal Defense Fund is protecting the voting rights of African Americans. We're in the courts every day trying to ensure that every eligible African American has the ability to participate fully in the political process. But this year we face the additional challenge of COVID-19 and we need your help. Churches are an integral part of our community, and this year you can help by ensuring that every voter who needs it has available a mask and gloves on election day. We're asking you to begin to prepare now, ordering extra PPE so that voters in your community will know that your church will be out at the polls on election day with free masks and gloves to every voter who needs it. This is something our churches should be able to do. We're asking you to help. Please reach out and contact me if you have any questions, but I'm hoping that you will connect with those in your community who can help you with this important initiative for our community and for our democracy. Thank you. Amen. We pray that we know that it is extremely important that we do whatever we need to do to make sure everyone gets out to vote because we have that right to vote. And amen, a voteless people is a hopeless people. So we don't want to be hopeless. We want to go out and exercise our rights. And we play, we ask again, we couple with the NAACP to ask that we would join together to make sure everybody's safe as they go out to the polls to make their votes. Amen. I see Reverend Renfro out there. Welcome, welcome again. Amen. But let's just go into prayer now. Amen. Lord, we just thank you. We praise you. We glorify you. For you are truly worthy to be praised. Thank you for allowing us to study and show our self-approval. We know that a workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We ask you, Lord, right now, we've done anything in thought, word, and deed that would hinder you from coming. Forgive us right now. Cover us in the blood of Jesus, Lord, and let the teaching be able to in, 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 in empower us to, to, to make us the light that we need to be to shine in the midst of this world that people might know that you are God, that you are Lord, that there is no other God but you. We ask this in Jesus' name, all those in agreement which say amen, amen, and thank God. All right, remember Exodus chapter 10, Exodus chapter 10, Exodus chapter 10. And for those that don't have your Bibles, it's on the screen. We'll read along with me as I read here, Exodus chapter 10, starting at verse one. Then the Lord said to Moses, go to Pharaoh, for I have heartened his heart and the hearts of his officials so that I may perform these signs of mine amongst them that you may tell your children and grandchildren how I dealt harshly with the Egyptians and how I performed my signs among them and that you may know that I am the Lord. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said to him, this is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews says, how long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Let my people go so that they may worship me. If you refuse to let them go, I will bring locusts into your country tomorrow. 
They will cover the face of the ground so that it cannot be seen. They will devour what little you have left after the hail, including every tree that is growing in your fields. They will fill your houses and those of all your officials and all the Egyptians, something neither your parents nor your ancestors have ever seen from the day they settled in this land till now. Then Moses turned and left Pharaoh. Pharaoh's officials said to him, how long will this man be a snare to us? Let the people go so that they may worship the Lord their God. Do you not yet realize that Egypt is ruined? Verse eight, then Moses and Aaron were brought back to Pharaoh. Go, worship the Lord your God, he said, but tell me who will be going. Moses answered, we will go with our young and our old, with our sons and our daughters and with our flock and herds because we are to celebrate a festival to the Lord. Pharaoh said, the Lord will be with you. If I let you go along with your women and children, clearly you are bent on evil. No, have only the men go and worship the Lord. Since, this, since that's what you have been asking for. Then Moses and Aaron were driven out of Pharaoh's presence. And the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over Egypt so that locusts swarm over the land and devour everything growing in the field, everything left by the hail. So Moses stretched out his staff over Egypt. And the Lord made an east wind blow across the land all that day and all that night. By morning, the wind had brought the locusts. They invaded all Egypt and settled down in every area of the country in great numbers. Never before had there been such a plague of locusts, nor will there ever be again. They covered all the ground until it was black. They devoured all that was left after the hail. Everything growing in the field and the fruit on the trees, nothing green remained on the tree or plant in all the land of Egypt. Verse 16, Pharaoh quickly summoned Moses and Aaron and said, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. Now forgive my sin once more and pray to the Lord your God to take this deadly plague away from me. Moses then left Pharaoh and prayed to the Lord. And the Lord changed the wind to the very strong west wind, which caught up the locusts and carried them into the Red Sea. Not a locust was left anywhere in Egypt. But the Lord heartened Pharaoh's heart and he would not let the Israelites go. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand towards the sky so that the darkness spread over Egypt, darkness that can be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand towards the sky and total darkness covered all Egypt for three days. No one could see anyone else or move about for three days. Yet all the Israelites had light in the places where they lived. Verse 24. Then Pharaoh summoned Moses and said, go, worship the Lord. Even your women and children may go with you. Only leave your flock and herd behind. But Moses says, you must allow us to have sacrifices and burnt offering to present to the Lord our God. Our livestock too must go with us. Not a hoof is to be left behind. We have to use some of them in worshiping the Lord our God. And until we get there, we will not know what we are to use to worship the Lord. But the Lord heartened Pharaoh's heart, and he was not willing to let them go. Pharaoh said to Moses, go out of my sight. Make sure you do not appear before me again. The day you see my face, you will die. Just as you say, Moses replied, I will never appear before you again. I'd read for you the chapter, Exodus chapter 10. Amen. I pray that you have your Bibles. Amen. I see my brother out there, Brother Martins. Welcome, welcome as we study 
on Exodus chapter 10. Exodus chapter 10, as these plagues continue and God continue dealing with Pharaoh and the land of Egypt. All right. Verses one through six, God tells Moses to bring another warning to Pharaoh, another warning to Pharaoh. I see Sister Butler has joined us out there, amen. I see Sister Lane is out there as well. Good to see you, good to see you. Welcome, welcome. We're in Exodus chapter 10. I see Brother John Lowe is out there, praise God. Everybody's out there. Make sure we are in Exodus chapter 10 and we're talking about verses one through six. Amen, uh, where God tells Moses to bring another warning to Pharaoh. And this is the eighth plague, of course, uh, when it's talking about the locusts. And God says, I have hardened Pharaoh's heart. So we see in the scriptures as we've been studying Exodus, there are several times when Pharaoh's heart was hardened. We see that God hardened Pharaoh's heart in Exodus 4.21. Exodus 7, 3, Exodus 7, 13, Exodus 7, 14. But we also see that Pharaoh hardened his own heart in, the, in, in Exodus 7, 22, in, in Exodus 8, 15, in Exodus 8, 19, 8, 32, and also in 9, 7. We also see that we will see in 9, 34, and 35. But from this point on, it's going to specifically say, now... God himself, it says the Lord has hardened Pharaoh's heart. Now, what is so unusual about this? Well, what we need to realize is in the Bible, God says, God will tell you over and over and over again, you don't need to do this. You need to do that. You don't need to do this. You need to do that. You're constantly battling over and over with God. Then God says, okay, I'm just going to turn you over to your own desires of your heart. And I'm going to make you believe what you are saying, even though it is not true. And it's called reprobate. So we have to be very, very careful dealing with our God. God is God and we need to do it God's way. If God is telling us something, God is warning something, we need to trust in God no matter how it seems, no matter how it feels, because God knows what's best. And also we see in the scripture here that God, this, this hardening of Pharaoh's heart and, 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 and God allowing Pharaoh's heart to be hardened, it was more than just for Pharaoh. As we're going to see coming up in the scriptures, it was also to show uh, the Hebrews, the Israelites, that God is God and show them the power of their God, because we also see in the scriptures, it says, I am going to bring this about that, that they may tell their sons and the, the sons may tell their sons and, and grandchildren. So God is not just doing this for this present time. God is doing this to for uh, historical, to let uh, the generations ahead to know that their God is God. And their God is almighty and there is no other God more mightier than him. And then we see in here, it says, how long will you go and refuse to humble yourself? You know, pride at the heart of Pharaoh is like pride at the heart of us. A lot of us have pride. You know, sometimes we have to step off of our pride, amen, and give in. You know, I was talking to somebody the other day and tell them, you know, sometimes you got to lose in order to win, amen. We'll say that again. Sometimes you have to lose in order to win. What, what am I saying? That you can't always get your way. Sometimes you need to give in, amen, and, and know that even with you, because you belong to God, all things are going to work out for your good anyway. No weapon formed against you is going to prosper. If God be for you, then who can be against you? So, you know, don't be standing on your pride, oh, I'm this, oh, I have this rank, oh, I'm all that. You need to give in and, and you know, allow God to take care of it. Pray for them. Amen? So, so, so let us not be full of pride because pride, you know, it, it, the Bible tells us that, you know, great pride comes before the fall. So you're getting ready to fall. And I have been there. Amen. So we need to, to make sure, make sure we're not walking in pride. Amen. 
Again, sometimes you have to lose in order to win because you know what? All things do work out for our good because we belong to God. Amen. Now, verse 7 through 11 shows where Pharaoh seems uh, uh, to relent, okay? But he, he, he got qualifications in it, you know? And, 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 and we also see that, that even his officials, it, it says, how long shall this man be a snare to us? So, so even though Pharaoh's holding out, his people are coming to him. His officials are coming to him and say, look, can't you see what's going on? You know, how long are we going to be putting up with this because of you? Amen. He said, we need, to, we, we need to, to let them go and worship the way they need to do. Can't you see all these other plagues, all this stuff that we be going through right now? And then again, where, is the, where are the, the, magician, the um, magicians that he had? Where, where, where are these magical people that were doing this thing? We don't even hear from them anymore. Remember uh, a couple of plagues ago, they couldn't even do it. They were amazed. They said, oh, this is God. So they have stepped out now and, and, and stopped being a part of it now because they are seeing that that they're, they, the Hebrew God, the Israelite God, is God and is powerful. Amen. So we, 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 we Pharaoh sort of standing on his own, standing alone in all that what uh, Pharaoh is doing. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. And, 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 and Pharaoh is constantly offering compromise. You know, Pharaoh again wants to, to, to bargain with God, with Moses. He wants to, 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 to uh, uh, allow some of them to go into the wilderness. He says, well, you know, you let the men and women go, uh, excuse me, let the men go out there, but leave the women and the children here while you go out, you know. So, so Pharaoh still have not put it in his mind or realized that who God is because he's still trying to make a deal. He's still trying to do a winning thing. And maybe he has his mind, oh man, they're not going to come back. Amen. He can see the hand that's being dealt out and he don't want to deal with it. He wants to do everything that he possibly can in order to, to, to win in some matter in, or shape or form. Amen. We see Sister Likes. Good to see you out there. Welcome, welcome that you've joined in. We're in Exodus chapter 10. Amen. We're talking, uh, uh, we're in, in, in verses 7 through 13. So join in with us. Get your Bibles as we go. And as earlier, remember I told you all of the plagues are hooked up against the gods of the Egyptians. Because remember, there was Kanum, K-H-N-U-M, was the garden of the Nile, you know. So God showed himself mighty against them. Then we have the uh, uh, Hapi, H-A-P-I, who was the spirit of the Nile, you know. God showed he was more powerful than them. Then we had God, the, 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 uh, the uh, Osiris, who, who the Nile was the bloodstream of Osiris, and God took control of that. Then we saw God sent in the frogs to show that he was greater than the goddess H-E-Q-T, amen, because that was the goddess of fertility. Also, God showed that he was the God more powerful than the goddess of H-A-T-H-O-R, I believe it is Hathor, and that was the, the cow-like God when, when he affected the livestock. She was the cow-like motherless God. And, and then we, we saw with the medicine, uh, the, the I-M-H-O-T-E-P, -P, the goddess of the medicine. And then we saw the nut god, which was the goddess of the sky. So God was showing that your gods, your idols, who you worshiping, they have, they have nothing when it comes to me. I am God. I am almighty. They can't do anything against me. They can't stop things from happening. So I am the God. Yet Pharaoh still can't get it in his head that God is the almighty God. Jehovah, Yahweh, El. He's dealing with the God almighty. So despite all this, Pharaoh shows he still don't know who God is. 
And you know, sometimes with us, you know, God will deliver us over and over again. And yet when some other calamity comes, we worry it again. God has already shown himself powerful, showed herself more powerful, showed that she loves us, he loves us, that, that, that no weapon formed against us, that all things shall work together for our good, that, that, that if God be for us, who can be for, uh, against us? But yet and still, over and over again, we, we don't look back historically to see how God has brought us out, how God has brought us through, how God has sustained us, how God has made it work out for our good, and we start worried again. We need to know that our God is God, and no matter what, if God be for you, no matter what the situation is, no matter what the circumstances is, nobody can stand against you. You don't have to worry about the weapons. Even if you make the mistake, it's still going to work out for your good and it's going to be a lesson to you what not to do. All right? So we need to, to, to keep all of this in mind. And Exodus 10 shows all of these things unto us. Now verses 12 through 15 is when, you know, God tells Moses to go out there and, and bring in the locusts, you know, and it says that they ate up everything. Now God is showing power over another God, and that God is uh, the, the Egyptian God Set, S-E-T. And because it is thought that this particular God is the protector of the crops. So when God calls the wind, the east wind to blow in there, this goddess of Set could not uh, protect the crops, couldn't even protect the, the fruit of the trees, it came, they came in and they ate everything. So God is showing Egypt, the Egyptians that God is God, the almighty God. All right? All right? And here come Pharaoh again. Oh, come on, I done seen, I done messed up, you know. Now you can take your children, y'all just go on out there and do what you, you need to do. You know, he says, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. So Pharaoh did the same thing he did in Exodus 9, 27 through 28. He said the word repent, I repent, but did not follow through with the action. His heart was only heart more after God, you know, relented and, and took away the, the locusts away from him. So we, we, we can't be hardening our heart either. We, you know, we want to make deals with God. God, if you do this, I'll do that. If you do this, I'll do that. Then when God do it, we don't do what we're supposed to do. Come on now. Amen. We need to, if, 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 we need to just do it God's way. Trust God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge God and what? God will do. Direct your path. Tell you how to do it. Show us the way God wants us to do whatever it is that we're trying to do. All right. Now, verses uh, 21 through 23 is where this darkness comes upon. Uh, and this time, there's no warning. Okay. Remember before, as it did in the last chapter, it was two plagues and the third one that came or the last two, nothing happened. Wasn't no warning, wasn't anything that was going on. It just came. This is the same thing here. The Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand and towards the heaven that there may be darkness over Egypt. And God said that this darkness is a heavy darkness, a darkness that can be felt. All right. Amen. We, we see uh, Sister uh, Alika's out there. Amen. Welcome, welcome as you join us. We're in Exodus chapter 10, talking about verses 21 through 23, about this darkness that God has brought about. Now, this darkness stayed three days, three whole days. Now, this wasn't like a, an eclipse. You know, people say, oh, well, it was just an eclipse that happened and the eclipse moved. Well, if you look historically, the eclipse will come and then they'll go. This darkness stayed three whole days and it was so dark you could not see anything. There was no light anywhere other than with the Egyptians, with the, excuse me, with the Hebrews, with the Israelites. So God was again was showing Pharaoh, I'm not punishing my people with this anymore. 
They're going to have light while you're in darkness. They're going to have food while you don't have food. They're going to have livestock while you don't have livestock. God will protect us in the midst of everything that's going on if we would just know that our God is God, to trust God in all that we do and all that we say. Our God is a good God, all right? So all of the children of Israel in Goshen had light, but in Egypt it was dark. You know, it reminds me in, in, in some of the weather sometimes we'll, we'll, we were sitting in one place, it'd be raining extremely hard right across the street or right down the road. It's not even raining at this particular point. Our God is God, all right? So we need to trust God do it God's way, and God will bless us in the midst of everything going on. I know I'm being blessed in the midst of this pandemic. Amen. Even though I've had some effects that happened in my family, they recovered. Amen. Come on. Amen. So God will bring us through. God will bring us out. God will be God with us. So allow God to be God in your life. Amen. So many times we try to be our own God. We try to get it straight. And we can't get it straight. We run find our friends or find somebody else who we think have power. No, look, God has all the power. Trust in God. God get it done. God will be with you. God will bring you through. God will bring you out. Amen? And God will hold you while you have to go through and tell you, learn what you need to learn. Lessons learned while you're going through this because it should work out for your good. All right. And our last verses, verses 24 through 29, is where Pharaoh's last attempt to compromise with Moses. He says, Go serve uh, the Lord. Only let your flock and your herds be kept back. So now the men can go, the women can go, the children can go believe your livestock back here. But see, God's not putting up with this. Pharaoh made his last attempt to Moses. All the children of Israel could go for three days and sacrifice of the Lord. Now, undoubtedly, Pharaoh felt that God was a hard bargainer and made the best deal for himself that he could. Pharaoh still saw things as someone who thought he could bargain with the creator. Now, what does this show us? This shows us that he still didn't really know who the Lord God was because he would not submit to God. But what did it say? Moses said, no, we're not going for that at all. Not even a hoof, <laughs> not one hoof is going to be left. Not a hoof shall be left behind. The Lord God and the prophet Moses representing him was absolutely unwilling to compromise on any of these points. God wanted deliverance for all of the Israelites and all of their belongings as well. And not willing to deal even with this particular point. After all of this and darkness came, he said, get away from me. Take heed to yourself and see that, you're, that I don't see your face no more. You have to watch what you say. You know, a lot of times people say, you better watch what you pray for. <laughs> like, watch what you come out of your mouth. You know, there's power in the tongue. So we got to be careful of what we say because what did Moses turn around and say? Just like you say, I'm not going to see your face I'm not going to see your face anymore. Be careful with what you say. There's power. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. I'm going to say it again. Be careful of what you're speaking into existence. What are you saying about yourself, about your situation, about your circumstances towards someone else? There's life and death is in the power of the tongue. All right, so be careful with all this, this talking. So we see that Pharaoh was just, you know, tired of Moses, tired of this whole situation, you know. But he talked himself into some serious stuff here because our God, what? 
is God. Our God is God. I heard somebody else come out on the on the phone line. A, a man, I see Reverend Ida Sue. Welcome, welcome. We're now finishing up Exodus chapter 10. Amen. Uh, the last few verses. So, so um, this ends the account of these nine plagues. All right. And now the big plague is about to happen. The big thing is about to happen. And we're going to be talking about that next week. All right. The Bible tells us that there were several reasons, though, why God sent these plagues unto Pharaoh and the, and the Egyptians. Well, number one, to, to show Pharaoh who God was, because in, in Exodus chapter five, verses two, Pharaoh said, who is this? Who is the Lord? So God was showing Pharaoh who God was, who he was, who she was. God showed himself more powerful than any Egyptian God, any false God that they were worshiping in Egypt. Also to show the power of God through Moses. Now, why would God want to do that? We belong to God. God works through us, through our hands, through our voice, through our witnesses, and know that we are all instruments of God. If we allow God to use us and we do it God's way, we are representing God. So when people see you, and as we read in, 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 in the chapters in Genesis, when, when Jacob and, 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 and all the other ones, they knew that they belonged to God because as long as they were around, they had that favor of God with them. We saw with Joseph, remember? So God works through us. While God is blessing us and we are in others' presence, other people get some of the blessings or blessed because we are there. We are in the, in the midst of what is going on. Also, God brought all this to, to give a testimony to the children of Israel. And we see this in Exodus chapter 10, uh, verse 2. But before, when I told you God shows his power through uh, Moses, we can find that in Exodus chapter 9, verse 16. But again, in Exodus chapter 10, verse 2, God says, I'm doing this that, that for, for the generations to come, gen future generations to come. And we're also going to see uh, as we get into uh, after the Egyptians, excuse me, after the Israelites gets in the promised land, that, that even the Philistines are going to remember what happened, uh, what was going on in Egypt, how God brought the plagues and what has happened. So, so God is not doing this for this just one point, but to be a historical fact for that can be reference of who God is in the future and in future generations. Also, if we read Exodus, and we're going to be reading it a little bit later in Exodus chapter 12, verses 2, and later on in Numbers chapter 33, uh, chapter 33, verse 4, that God did this to judge these false gods, to judge these demons, and also to judge Egypt for worshiping these idols that was going on. And also, it was, again, like I said, to warn the nations that might attack uh, in the future. And we can see this in 1 Samuel chapter 4, verse 8, if we go ahead and read about those Philistines where they realized uh, 400 years later uh, uh, that God had delivered uh, the Israelites out of Egypt and God had plagued them until Egypt let them go. And finally, uh, God did it as a testimony of the greatness of God to, uh, to Israel. And we, we're going to see this in Exodus chapter 15, verse 11, and in the future in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 34. So God will show that God is for us if we trust God, if we allow God to use us. If we do it God's way, God will show himself, God will show herself through us powerful, through us with favor, through us with knowledge, through us with wisdom, through us with testimony. So Exodus 10 is a great chapter. I'd ask you to read back over it and see it. I, I pray that as we have uh, discussed uh, Exodus chapter 10, amen, that uh, you got something out of it. Uh, 
that, that you can use, amen, that you can walk and, and talk and be all that you need to be for God, knowing that your God is God. And if God be for us, now you ought to finish that for yourself. I'm going to say it again. If God be for us, oh, I don't hear you saying it. If God be for us, who can what? Be against us. Amen. Thank you for joining in with us in our study in Exodus chapter 10. Um, amen. We pray that you would tune back in next Wednesday with us at, at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. Of course, uh, 5.30 Central Standard Time in the Bible study. Uh, uh, we pray that you would read ahead Exodus chapter 11. And if there were any questions that we did not address, we pray that you would email us and you would type it or uh, let us know, write us a letter, amen. Let us know that way we'll be able to address those questions on next Wednesday. Also, we ask you to tune in on Sunday, amen. God is uh, dealing with me now with a special subject. I don't want to uh, get into it now, but amen. I'm ready, I'm studying, I'm, I'm listening uh, to God, that God might... Uh, uh, bring it to fruition to be uh, have a specificity that it will address uh, how he has given it to me how she has given it to me that I might give it to you so join in with us on Sunday at 9 30 Eastern Standard Time 8 30 Central Standard Time amen join us on Facebook amen join us uh, on the phone line amen and remember you can always go to YouTube, amen, where we have uh, uh, also have our, 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 our services out there. You can go back, look over, look over our um, previous Bible studies, amen, and also uh, look over some of that project management. Now, for the last few Wednesdays, we have not been uh, going over any summaries. Um, I'm trying to give you time that you might study what you have now before we finish up with the last two summaries. So continue to look over it, continue to look at the uh, various uh, uh, broadcasts concerning it, highlighting your book, amen, do what you need to do, get ready for the certi your uh, project management in ministry certification test. It's coming, it's coming. So continue to study, but know that it's it's, you know it, amen. It's there. You don't have to worry about it. God will bring it back to your remembrance if you study to show yourself approval. So tune in again with us, amen, next Wednesday. Also, also, remember on Tuesdays, we have our prayer line. So come out on our prayer line, amen, and join us as we testimony, we sing, amen, and as we come together in agreement to God. Again, thank you for tuning in. We thank you for our partners. We thank you for all the gifts. We thank you uh, for our members being out here. Amen. Remember that you could be a virtual member of God's moving you, becoming part of us. But anything you do for this ministry, know that we are using it in order that we might be God's hand and be God's voice to, to, to increase uh, our ministry that we might go out and do what God has commanded us to do. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And remember, no gift is too small. Amen. Again, join back in with us. God bless you. I love you with the love of Christ. And I will see you again. God bless you.